In 2003, two people who were not even trained to fly an aircraft took off with a Boeing 727 somewhere in the African continent. Those two people and that Boeing 727 was never ever found. It has not been found till date. It just totally disappeared from the face of the earth. And today we're going to talk about how that came about in Cockpit Stories episode 13. So let's get started. Also right, before we continue guys a small announcement you all know about we know the other vision academy we are starting off with the classroom classes once again finally i'm tired of teaching online on zoom so we are starting off with the classes which are classroom based classes once again and they will be starting somewhere in october i'll keep you updated on the dates you can get yourself registered for the classroom based classes for your dgc ground exams the details are in the description or you can whatsapp or call us on the numbers on your screen right now so this is the story of how a 154 feet long and 108 feet wide huge three engine jet aircraft totally vanished from the face of the earth i know whenever an aircraft vanishing is talked about obviously mh370 comes to our brains but this is one more incident which not a lot of people know about so i'm going to be telling you about this today so the aircraft was a boeing 727 it was one of those three airplanes which american airlines had retired and had sold them off to mr mori now mr mori was an entrepreneur and he bought these three boeing 727s this particular aircraft was registered as november 844 alpha and mr mori then eventually sold this aircraft to mr erwin Mr Erwin was a South African entrepreneur and he bought this aircraft so that he could transport fuel diesel fuel from major cities to the diamond mines which were there in Africa at that time now it was impossible to transport diesel fuel to the mines by road because the roads were really bad and there had been a lot of civil wars going on so to get fuel to the diamond mines Mr Erwin bought this 727 Now the aircraft was retrofitted with fuel tanks which means all the seats were removed and huge huge fuel tanks were installed inside the cabin so that the aircraft would carry the diesel. Now Mr Erwin bought the aircraft for 1 million dollars and flew it from Miami all the way to Angola. However, once the aircraft landed in Angola, the whole deal fell off. The reason was the aircraft was never authorized to fly by the authorities there. The aircraft was fitted with tanks, huge fuel tanks, but no proper procedures were followed when those tanks were installed. As a result, the authorities out there felt it was unsafe to let the aircraft fly. Also, the authorities had another problem. There was no HF radio on the aircraft, which was a requirement as per the Angolan authorities. And this is an actual incident, an actual funny thing posted by the actual crew of that aircraft who bought the aircraft to angola they posted on paperune that they actually got a small hf set from a cessna 206 which is a very small airplane they actually got a hf set from a cessna 206 and they put it up on the 727 by drilling holes inside the fuselage however despite all these jugards the aircraft still stayed on ground and it was on ground for more than 1 year at lunada in angola the aircraft was totally unairworthy as in things were broken on the airplane it was not maintained at all and it was just standing out there also no fees were paid no dues were paid the parking charges the airport charges the navigation charges no charges were paid by mr irwin the aircraft was just totally abandoned at that airport so after one year mr mori who had initially bought the aircraft from american airlines he decided to sell the aircraft off to someone else but to do that he had to get the aircraft airworthy again so what mr mori did was he hired a flight engineer a freelancing flight engineer from the us his name was ben padilla now this guy had worked on the boeing 727s earlier and he had also worked with mr mori earlier so mr mori had him fly to angola in april of 2003 to get the aircraft back in order So when he landed in Angola this guy set on work with the aircraft and after almost about 1 month of hard work the aircraft became airworthy again. So now the plan was Mr Padilla who was the hired flight engineer he would hire two flight crews from Air Gemini which is a local airline and these guys would fly the aircraft from Luanda in Angola to Johannesburg in South Africa where the owner of the aircraft Mr Mori and the new customers for the aircraft would be waiting for it this was all supposed to happen on the 7th of may 
So on 6th of May, Mr. Padilla tells Mr. Mori that I need to take the aircraft out and do a high power engine run up. Which means basically he would just park the aircraft at a lonely spot on the airport and set the engines to full power just to check if all the systems and the engines were working properly or not. So on the evening of 6th of May 2003, Mr. Ben Padilla and his hired technician, his hired assistant, Mr. John Muntantu, they both boarded the Boeing 727, took it out of the hangar and took it to the engine run-up bay where they started up the engines and did a high power engine run up. After that, the aircraft started taxing erratically, taxing here and there and it went to the runway. All the aircraft lights were off, there was no communication with the ATC. No clearances were asked, no permission was asked from the ATC. The aircraft just taxied to the runway and without permission from the ATC, it entered the runway, the engines were set to full thrust and the aircraft took off. After takeoff, it headed towards southwest into the skies, never ever to be seen again. If you guys wanna see me vlog, if you wanna see me do weird things in my life, and if you wanna see how I beat up my cousin on his birthday, you can check out the link to my vlogging channel. It's called Fit Boy, it should be coming up here. And we uploaded a recent video wherein I beat up my cousin real bad. So you can go check that out. Also, you can follow me on Instagram. My Instagram handle is called Tapshi. It's on your screen right now. I love to interact with all of you guys. And I try and reply to a lot of messages that I get on my Instagram DMs. So feel free to drop me a message there. Feel free to follow me and have an inside look into my life. Let's now continue. Now, Mr. Ben Padilla, the flight engineer and his assistant, they were both not pilots, they were both engineers. Mr. Padilla was trained to fly airplanes, but he only had a PPL license, a private pilot license, wherein you can only fly a very small Cessna or a small aircraft. He was never trained to fly a big jet, he did not even have a commercial pilot license. These guys took off with the Boeing 727 and that aircraft was never ever found. On the next day, the owner of the aircraft, Mr. Mori, he was waiting at Johannesburg with the supposedly new owners of the aircraft. And that's when he got a call from Lunada telling him that the aircraft had took off and no one had any idea where it went. Imagine the kind of shock Mr. Mori must have felt when he got to know that his aircraft was just literally stolen. A huge, huge jetliner literally just stolen off like like a small car is stolen. So obviously the police and all the embassies and everyone was informed. Even the FBI in USA was informed. An extensive worldwide search was carried out for the aircraft. Literally a worldwide search. And the reason behind that was this incident happened almost about two years after 9-11. And the anti-terrorism fight was at its peak. So a 727 which has huge fuel tanks which is actually filled up with fuel to its brim is a very very good potential weapon. As a result, the US was on its toes, this carried out extensive searches. All possible airports where the aircraft could have landed were checked. All possible tries were made to find any parts of that aircraft in the open market. However, no trace has till date been found either of the aircraft or those two people who were last seen on that airplane. Obviously, like all incidents, many theories have been put forward. Some of them point at the aircraft having landed at some remote location where it was scrapped and all the parts of the aircraft were sold off in the market. Some people believe the aircraft must have crashed after takeoff into the Atlantic and it was obviously then never to be found because the search started about three days after the aircraft was stolen and by then the parts may have drowned into the ocean. However, whatever be the reason, this remains till date one of the best stories in aviation I've ever heard. Where two people who are not even trained to fly an aircraft just boarded one, took it to the runway, took off with it and the world has no clue where they went. And that was the story of the Boeing 727 that was stolen and never to be found. I hope you guys enjoyed the story. I would like you to tell me in the comment section what you think might have happened with the aircraft. Also, thank you so much for watching. If you like the content, as always, please do subscribe to the channel, give it a thumbs up and share the video around. Show it to your friends. And thank you so much and I'll see you guys in the next one.